Welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today I'm talking about Winnipeg and the things you need to know before visiting this city. I just returned from a trip here. After many long awaited years, I finally returned to Canada and I learned so many things about this city that I had no idea. You wanna stay tuned to the end because you're gonna learn a lot of really interesting fun facts. Winnipeg, also known as the Pig, is located smack dab in the middle of Canada. It's a place where a lot of immigration happens. A lot of people come here for conferences as well. They have a very large convention center. We just visited in the summer. We were here in June and we traveled around with various guides and we learned what makes Winnipeg so special. We were really surprised to find that this city has world-class art and culture scene that we had no idea because there's certain cities in Canada that get more of the spotlight such as the Six and Vancouver but Winnipeg really has a lot of elements that make those cities special but on a smaller scale and it's much more approachable here. So first of all let's talk about getting to Canada. So if you are coming internationally to Winnipeg, you're going to want to download the Arrive Canada app, Arrive Can, and follow the instructions. You may have to upload a vaccine or take a COVID test upon arrival. And the arrival process is pretty easy breezy from there. Now let's talk about the weather. So Winnipeg has been dubbed Winter Peg because they have one of the longest and coldest winters here. However, did you know that you can get a suntan here in Winnipeg? And I definitely did. If I look a little tan, it's because of that 40 degrees Celsius weather that we experienced during our trip. Did you know that Winnipeg has 316 days of sunshine per year. So a lot of those days that it's really cold, you will see some sun out during those days. A lot of people, they tend to go to the lakes during summertime, that's very popular. Those are the beaches here. By the way, guys, if you are enjoying this video, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe down below. Now let's talk about the winter time. So snow can last, up until May here in Winnipeg, you might see some snowy days up until May. And winter can be pretty cold. I'm talking about negative 50. And plus with the wind chill, some of our local guides were saying it can get really cold. But without the wind, you will even notice people wearing shorts. Some of the locals have told us people go outside with shorts, they just get used to it. There's a number of activities that make wintertime fun here. Although we're in prairie land, and there's virtually no mountains. There are other activities that people really enjoy, particularly tobogganing and ice skating. So this right here is a toboggan. They operate it in the winter time because this whole lake freezes over and they have all kinds of activities on the lake. And you will notice that there is the largest ice skating rink here in Winnipeg. And along the forks, they basically turn an area that's a food hall into a giant après ski kind of experience. And it sounds really cool to the point where I might even give Winnipeg a try during the winter time. There's warming huts, 24 total last year that were developed by different artists. There's saunas, there's a river trail that runs from January to March. And it's basically a giant frozen river. And then there's fat bikes. So if you're into biking, you can turn some of the snow mounds into an arena for biking, which is really cool and fun to watch for spectators as well. One of the things that impressed me so much about Winnipeg is the international feel. Upon arriving, we noticed many Ukrainian flags within the airport, and there is a very large Ukrainian population here. You can get giant pierogies, which are delicious. In addition to the Ukrainian population, you'll notice a lot of Filipinos, a lot of Indian people, and of course you have the First Nations, which is very present here at the Métis people. You'll notice a lot of their cultural elements pervading the local spirit, and it's amazing to see all of this unity and different groups of people being represented in Winnipeg. So speaking of the Native American culture, we noticed that it's very present here in Winnipeg and also increasingly more celebrated. For example, for Canada Day, they decided to play up the native traditions rather than the colonial history, and they had a powwow at the Forks, and it was really interesting to watch. Another thing about walking around Winnipeg, you'll notice the city might look a little familiar, and that's because it was used as the backdrop for a number of really popular films, including Jesse James with Brad Pitt, 
Shall We Dance, and The Italian Job, Swordfish. I could keep going on and on, but the city has almost Chicago feel to the architecture and it's used for a dub of many different American cities. So in terms of terrain, you may wonder, what does Winnipeg look like? Well, we're in the plains here, we're in the prairie land, it's mostly flat. There are rivers, there's meadows, there's lakes, and we're located along the Assiniboine and Red Rivers. Winnipeg's major tourist attraction is the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. In fact, schools from all over the provinces come here to do field trips just to visit this museum. It's very unique. It costs about a half a billion dollars to make, and it dominates the skyline with its beautiful glass architecture. And it's one of the most interesting museums to wander around because I found myself not only enjoying the architecture, but the presentations and the way that they told the stories of different groups of people and how they got their rights. A lot of the stories really mimicked what happens in the United States as well. So it was very thought provoking. And just walking around, if you're really interested in photography and interested in getting some really good photos in Winnipeg, this museum is the place to go. Historically, Winnipeg has been a major railroad destination and railroad hub. However, when it comes to transportation, a lot of people end up traveling either by car or by foot. Uh, we ended up just walking to a number of the locations because we were right in the downtown and pretty much everything we wanted to see was right there on foot. We are checking out the courts right here. Beautiful dome right there. And one thing you'll notice about Winnipeg is a lot of the buildings are connected by these corridors really helpful especially in the winter we notice that there's no major highways in winnipeg in fact in the united states you'll notice a lot of freeways or highways that are five to seven lanes in either direction with major overpasses but in winnipeg there was nothing like that it was more like side streets and they have something called the perimeter highway which encompasses the city and that's like the main beltway Another thing that was really shocking and really drives a lot of the international relocation to this area is the inexpensive cost of living. Compared to some of the other cities in Canada, like Toronto or Ontario or Vancouver, we're talking about a fraction of the price here. So to live in downtown, guys, one bedroom, 985 Canadian dollars. So Mike? $900, a little less than $900 US to live right downtown in historic, historic building. In fact, I looked up the average cost of a one bedroom and it is $1,050 Canadian dollars per month. Now let's talk about the language and the culture, specifically the Francophone culture here in Manitoba slash Winnipeg. So French, of course, is a big part of Canadian history and 9% of the population of Manitoba can speak French plus English. So not a lot of people, but still sizable. However, you'll see French everywhere. It's a complete dual language system here, including on the airplane. If you're flying in from WestJet or Air Canada, you'll notice that they give presentations in both English and French. However, in Winnipeg, can you guess what the second most common language is? It's not French. It's actually the Filipino language of Tagalog. According to the census, 5% of the people in Winnipeg speak Tagalog as their mother tongue, whereas French is only 4% of the population. It's interesting because French is, is the language that's translated everywhere, yet the Filipino language of Tagalog is more popular. So I thought that was also really interesting. The last thing I wanna mention is that the food scene in Winnipeg is excellent. You can pretty much get every type of cuisine, including cuisines that are pretty difficult to get elsewhere. You're able to get really good Filipino food, pierogies, giant pierogies, by the way, with all of the spices and dill and sauce. And you can get poutine, delicious poutine. There's actual restaurants dedicated just to poutine. We went to a cocktail bar that was dedicated just to cocktails made from tea and different types of tea. It was very unique. Again, a fraction of what it would cost you in some of the other cities in Canada. So there you have it. I hope that you learned something new about Winnipeg and get a chance to visit very soon. Be sure to check out our vlog of Winnipeg. We took you all around the city and into the museums and restaurants 
and we'll be back to Canada very soon because there's so much to explore. Be sure to like and subscribe for more travel videos.